Welcome, I'm the Deadwood Jedi. This is gonna be another Raid Shadow Legends video. I wanted to cover the blessings that got changed. I guess I maybe I'm a little bit late to the party here. I usually am, that's okay. Uh, I just wanna cover them and give my impression on them. And then at the end, I'm gonna kinda lay in a plarium because like, I think there's a couple changes, especially to the Smite Blessing um, and the Phantom Touch that I think is really uh, inexcusable and pretty shameful. Uh, I'm I'm really actually pretty hot about it. Uh, and so I actually recorded the rant already because I was really upset by it. But I figured before that I could go through all the blessings one by one, kind of talk about the little bit of changes to them. Um, maybe talk about a couple of things that I would actually change if it were up to me instead, or, you know, at least talk about what, you know, why these aren't impactful if they aren't. Um, anyway, well, let's, let's go through it real quick and I'll try to be as brief as possible. So this isn't a crazy long video, but and I'm just so disappointed right now. I'm, just, I'm real, real disappointed and hurt a little bit by it. Not hurt, obviously, but, you know, I'm not surprised by Plarium. This is them to a T. It's just, you know, they usually do a better job of hiding it, in my opinion. Disappointing. Very disappointed. Not mad. Disappointed. We all know that's worse. All right, first blessing. Let's talk about it. Chainbreaker. Now, across the board, most of these changes are pretty small, and Chain Breaker is no exception. Um, basically, the percentage chance of removing debuffs is going to be increased. Now, Chain Breaker itself is basically going to remove any hard debuffs on your characters. Now, I should also say, for all these blessings, it's very, very hard to test. A lot of them are arena-based. I don't have a great arena team. It's, I'm not going to be able to test these. I'm going up against... If I am gonna test them, I'm going up against plat level team. So I will let you find other other content creators who can fully test these, but with the percentage base, the fact that I don't have hardly any blessings on my own account, because I just, I'm not really that eager to farm it that heavily, that's its own kind of thing. Um, so I have a really hard time testing the individual things. I did test Brimstone though. We will get that to that, to that at the end. We're all gonna be disappointed. Um, but anyway, just kind of be clarify that. Big thing with this is um, this ability had a three turn cooldown. That cooldown has been removed, which I think is great, right? On top of that, it has a chance of removing any of the hard uh, debuffs, hard CC abilities, right? We're talking stun, freeze, sleep, fear, true fear, petrification, provoke, right? Things that are gonna make you lose your turn or control of your champion, I guess, for a turn. Um, big change. Other than that, other than that cooldown being removed, which I think is great, is that uh, the percentages have all really gone up and pretty dramatically. So, you know, it was a 10% chance of removing a debuff. That goes to 50, goes to, that was a 5% chance, goes to 10 at one star. Uh, then at 10% to 15, 10 to 20% chance. Also, you know, notice that five star, there's a percent chance of filling this champion's turn meter when hit. That 10% chance went to a 20% chance, and the turn meter boost is a 20% chance instead of 10 as well. That's pretty significant. And then at six star, the 15% chance of removing debuff goes to 25 and the chance of the turn meter hit happening is 40% with the bonus still being 20%. So significant changes as far as like the bonuses to these things, right? The more significant changes are definitely happening at the higher levels. This is going to be a pattern for you guys. Um, but all those changes seem to be good, right? They're gonna help make this a more viable option. The chance of having the ability to remove a hard DC ability is pretty significant. 25% um, chance at six star is pretty significant. Um, so that's definitely gonna make this, I think, a more viable option here for people to choose. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss the next one. Now, the interesting thing is that we have a ability called Dark Resolve and Indomitable Spirit. These are two of the rare versions of this you know, basically the rare versions of Chainbreaker. Uh, I want to talk about them as a combination in a little bit, but first, what's happening? Basically, not a huge thing. Uh, at This has a one-turn cooldown and removes Freeze, Provoke. It has actually has a chance of blocking certain uh, hard CCs, Freeze, Provoke, and True Fear. Uh, the percentages all stay the same, basically, except at six star. Again, let's make it more happy for the whales. 25% uh, chance of blocking debuff instead of 20, and there's no more cooldown, so you can basically block them infinitely. That part of no cooldown, I think is great. Um, I would like to see all these percentage chances go up, maybe another 5% or so, but still, as it is, I can understand 
Uh, I don't I don't see any problem making it a little bit stronger at the higher levels. Um, and dropping the cooldown on it, I think, is a good thing. I wouldn't mind saying that a little bit earlier, frankly. Now, Indomitable Spirit is the other half of Dark Resolve, where you have a chance of blocking any stun, sleep, or fear debuff. The cooldown on this, it says it's removed. I think that's just at six star. Again, I have a real hard time being able to actually test this. The low percentage chance to happen. I don't, you know, I, I, being able to test this one is going to be real, real tricky to arrange. Um, but again, the 20% chance at six star goes to 25% chance. And then it says no cooldown. I, they copy pasted something here because if you're removing the cooldown, you're removing the cooldown or you're not, I don't really get it. Why it says that in the description. And then at the six star part, that's very confusing for me, but here's the thing. Uh, I'm not too worried about indomitable spirit. I'm not too worried about dark result because neither one are great choices, right? Uh, indomitable spirit does stun sleep and fear. Dark Resolve does Freeze, Provoke, and True Fear. Why, oh why, didn't they put Provoke, Fear, and True Fear on one skill so we have something we know we can use for Hydra? I will never know. Doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, but personally, that's what I would have done. Swap Freeze on Dark Resolve or the Fear on Indomitable Spirit. And now all of a sudden you got a Hydra choice, right? But no, let's not do that. Oh, this game. Let me tell you, this game. We have Incinerate. Incinerate is just a terrible thing. It tries to make HP burn viable in Arena, and it just fails at it. Um, they do a, they bump up all the percentages significantly. That's great, right? So basically at 5 and 6 star, the HP burn is going to do double damage, um, where it would be doing an extra 50%. Um, the other change they made here, which I think is interesting, is decreases enemy turn meter when they receive damage from an HP burn at 6 star, as opposed to destroying the max HP. Although, it does still say that in the description. Again, don't fully understand. Uh, but the turn meter reduction does make it a little bit more viable for arena since turn meter uh, manipulation is kind of important, right? So if there's a viable way to use HP burn in arena, this makes it more viable. There still isn't a viable way to use HP burn in arena, that's my knowledge, so it's still useless. Then we have lethal dose, poisons for arena. It's basically incinerate, but with poisons, it's still trash. It was trash before, it's still trash now. I don't really know what to say. All the bonuses for the damage are increased just like they were in Incinerate, so that basically at five and six star, you're getting double damage instead of 50% extra increase. That's all great. I mean, it improves it all along the way, so it's definitely a good change. It's just not good enough. No one's gonna use this. Then we have Survival Instinct. Uh, basically, I actually don't mind this one either. It is uh, the rare version here. Um, basically, when a debuff is play spread or transferred onto this champion, they get a turn meter boost, right? And it occurs once per enemy per turn. Uh, at the high waking, basically six star, there's no turn restriction. So however many you get, that's how many you're, how, that's all the boosts you're getting, right? Which is great. Um, and that, that's pretty, that can be pretty strong, I think. I actually think maybe this could be something we could use for something like Nether Spider, for example. Um, and all the, the percentage bonuses for the lower levels are actually increased. First time they've done that. So that's good. There's some potential to this one. It's not a great one, but it's not a bad one either. Um, so I, I think these changes are pretty good. Then we have Life Harvest. This is, you know, one of the legendary ones. Basically what happens is when an enemy is revived, it'll destroy a portion of their max HP. It was pretty small before. It was like 6%, 15%, 20%. And uh, at the higher, you know, the higher awakening levels, you get a turn meter boost too when somebody gets revived. Well, all those things have been boosted considerably. I don't know if this is still viable, but some considerable changes. Uh, destroyed max HP goes from 10% to 20% to 30% to 40% at six star. That's a lot. I mean, imagine somebody losing 40% of their max HP just by being revived. That's pretty significant right there. On top of that, those turn meter fields become a lot more significant as well. At three star, it's 10% instead of five. 20% at five star and 30% turn meter fill at six star awakening. That's, that's definitely a significant amount, definitely a significant amount. Now, of course, you know, where are we going to be using this? That's a real question, right? Sure. Something like ice golems, it could be helpful, but I mean, I'm not, I don't know that I'm getting a blessing for ice golems. Really the only place where I see, oh yeah, this is something we're definitely going to need. It would be in maybe hard doom tower where you're going against the dragon, right? The el end endless dragon, the whatever, the mortal dragon, the, that bone dragon thing. Um, and he's constantly bringing his minions back. Um, maybe that would work for that, but I don't even think they're revive champions, really. I think he just brings them in. Um, it's not quite like Ice Golem, right? Uh, 
and or maybe for arena really the arena is the only spot where i see this you know even having an impact and again you know if you're facing a team and you're revi- you're letting them revive over and over and over again you're doing something wrong to begin with so i'm guessing this still doesn't get used then we have temporal chains temporal chains is actually a pretty good one already right anytime an enemy gets a buff you get a term your boost the difference here is that the bus place at the start of a round are not going to count towards this. I actually don't mind that. I think that makes logical sense, quite frankly. They sh- probably shouldn't count at the start of a round, otherwise it makes this a little bit OP. Um, so I don't mind them changing that at 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 all, and I think that's going to be pretty good overall. That's really the only change that's happening with this, and I, I support it. Now, my favorite one, the one I think is actually a really good one that I think more people will use and one that I actually want to get now, uh, this is the only one where I'm like, ooh, I actually kind of want to really, really bump this one up here, uh, is Miracle Heal. And basically, every time you heal, you restore a portion of destroyed max HP, right? We're talking Sand Devil, we're talking uh, Hydra. This could be really helpful. It was a pretty small heal before and a pretty low chance of it proccing. You know, we're talking one star, three star, five star, six star ascension. It was a 10%, 30% chance of proccing, 50%, 75, and then 100 finally. Well, they bumped all those. So now it's a 50% chance of this to proc when you heal on a one-star blessing. That's actually pretty significant, and it's going to restore 10% of the heal. That's also pretty significant. I like that. Um, at three stars, 75% and 15% heal uh, restoring. Uh, I think that's pretty good. Five star and six star, it's 100% chance. So it's going to happen every time you heal, which is good. And the mount healed is 20% at five star and 30% at six star. These are good ones. I, I like this. I think this is definitely something that people will be using in Hydra for sure. And I think it's going to be really helpful there. So I like the Miracle Heal. I think that's a good one. Uh, this is probably the blessing I would put on like my God Seeker when I'm farming Sand Devil, for example. There's This This is good. This is a good, good change. Then we get to the two that suck. Sorry. Spoilers. Uh, Phantom Touch. And Phantom Touch just, you know, kind of pisses me off. Whatever. Here's the thing. When you nerf something, it's because it's too strong. But if you don't nerf the top rate of it, you're not telling me it's too strong. It's obviously not too strong. If you want everybody to get a six-star version of this, then it's clearly not too strong if you're not changing the six-star version of it. What you're doing is you're hurting the player base, the free-to-play, the low spender. You're saying, oh, too strong for you guys. Horse. That's horse manure is what it is. Crash, and I hate it. And that's what they did with Phantom Touch. They went a 20% chance on the first level, first star to 15. 40% to 30. 100% to 75% at five star. It's not even 100% at five star anymore. That six star, you get the bonus damage. You had it before. Well, guess what? Six star hasn't changed. Still 100% chance to have it happen. And a 35% chance of a bonus attack. Just like it was before. But it's too strong. Give me a break. Give me a break. Now, let's be real. The percentage it's reduced by is not significant enough to really affect us that badly. It's still a great blessing to have. Really strong and is still recommended for everybody. But, I mean, it's just a slap in the face. Really is. Really is. I hate I hate this one. Uh, and let's move over to Brimstone. The other one. Same thing's happening here. Even worse, though. And I'm going to show you exactly what I mean. Uh, so, let's talk about it. First off, this ability used to, all, the first couple paragraphs completely the same, right? Same kind of damage, all that's fine. It used to be that you could only have one active, that it could not be removed, could not be blocked, could not be resisted, or transferred. Well, guess what, guys? That's not the case anymore. Uh, you can still only have one active per team, but now. The protected version of it, the guaranteed version of it, that's only at six star. Yay, us. We went from a 20% chance to land to 15 at one star. A 40% chance to land to 30% at three star. 70% chance to land to a 60% chance to land at five star. Oh, and at five star, it's protected. Yay. At six star, it's 100%. At six star, it's guaranteed to land and protected. What does this mean? means you need accuracy now, boys and girls. You need accuracy in order to land this. It's also no longer protected, so it can be cleansed. No longer guaranteed either. I'm real upset with this. But this is the only blessing I actually really have the opportunity to test because I have it on my clan boss team, and I put it on my Fushan. Fushan has an A1 that does 
no debuffs, right? So anytime I see a resist in a run, I know what just happened. Brimstone didn't land because we don't have the accuracy for it. I took the accuracy off my Fushan. You, you, you can watch. Now I know I've been talking about a Brimstone. I do have access to test server account. A lot of these blessings are really hard to test. Um, there's a percentage chance to land and all this other fun stuff. The one thing I can test though is Brimstone. Because I have it in my clan boss team. I have it on Fushan. It's a one star Brimstone. It's just a baby, but it helps me do more damage. And every single one of us is about to see a major reduction in our damage across the boards. Why, you ask? Because now all of a sudden, unless you have a six-star blessing, you're going to need accuracy to land it. How do I know that? Well, Fushan has no abilities on his A1 skill. But what do I see pop up occasionally as we're doing a run? Nothing other than a resistance proc. Resistance? Resistance from what? Just as A1. Just as damage. Oh, I know what it must be from. Brimstone. That has to be the most frustrating thing in the world. That you made something that everybody had, people would buy specifically for, and then you took it away. You already have to have a legendary champion in order to be able to use it. Already have to have that. Already has to be somebody that you're bringing into your teams that you find valuable. And now you're saying that doesn't matter? Doesn't matter? I am so, like, offended by it. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous that they would do that to us. That They would take away the ability for this land guaranteed. I mean... That's what they had in there. But apparently, it's too strong an ability. So we got to nerf it. Uh, I'm sorry. Just for the six stars. Just for one through five stars. Just for the plebs out there that can't afford the six star. Just for them, we're going to nerf it. But if you're willing to spend the money, yeah, we'll keep it guaranteed. We're not going to change it for sure. It is such horse crap. I can't even. I can't even, guys. I don't even know how to how to say this. Like, not only is this going to affect every single player out there, I mean, I think, safe to say, it's going to affect every single player out there. Already the percentage chance is lower, and now you're saying it's not guaranteed, so I have to build my champions differently. I don't know if you've been watching the run, but we're not getting any procs. Grant, I turned off all of his skills. I didn't want to see the decreased defense, so I want to know if there's a resistance, what is it from? It's just from that. And I took off his accuracy. He's definitely hitting you know, less hard than usual right now. I'm not worried about my team. My team's going to be fine. I have an endgame account. My team's going to be fine. All my teams are going to be fine. This, it's, this doesn't affect me here. It's going to affect my free-to-play big time. It's going to affect a lot of people big time. And it's, I mean... I don't know how else to phrase it. It's just, it's really disappointing. Because now I need accuracy on these champions. Uh, this is a damage ability. I put this on my damage champions who don't always need accuracy. Somebody like a Ronda, who everybody has and has multi-hit abilities, and this is a really good blessing for. You saw that resistance right there, right? You saw that resistance right there. That's what I'm talking about. That little green thing that comes up and says, resistance. It was hidden by a few stuff out there. But when you see that, that's that blessing, Brimstone, trying to land and failing to do so. It's about as disappointing a change as I can see. And the fact that it's only affecting the low spenders in this game, the medium spenders in this game, the free-to-play spenders in this game, it's really offensive. It's gross to me. Gross. Because if the ability was too strong, you would nerf it across the board. You're just nerfing the you know the, the bottom levels for for the come uppers. That's, I mean, I can't say I'm surprised. This is Plarium in a nutshell. It's just rare that you see it this blatantly done. When you make a change like this and it only affects those that don't have the top level thing, clearly a nerf and clearly designed to punish the players that don't spend a ton of money in this game, as if it doesn't cater enough to the whales out there. Yeah, I'm pretty disappointed. Pretty disappointed by this. Um, you know, still love the game. Still love the people. 
all that stuff is still there. But I don't understand how you can make a change like this and go, oh, yeah, that's going to be good for the game. That's going to get people to want to play more. If anything, it makes me want to spend less money on this game. Quite frankly, you're awakening gear. You're doing these blessings. You're adding all these things and complex levels and more reasons for me to dump money into this game and then just make it harder for everybody. It's really unfortunate. Now, I mean, to be fair, right? If they had started with this, they had started with this and then gone to the other changes, man, that, you know, or like not changed anything. You'd be like, okay, well, that's just how it is. But this is, this is disappointing. This is really disappointing. I don't know how else to put it. I'm just really, I'm really disappointed. Now, obviously, I run my Fushan with accuracy. It's not actually going to affect my clan boss team, right? Not that much. And if you have accuracy on the champion that you're using, this on, it's not going to be that big a deal, right? You're still going to get the blessing. It's just, it's another qualification that wasn't there before and really lessens the impact of it, you know? Especially, you're lowering the chance of it to land, and now you're adding an accuracy requirement. That means there's already baked in 3% chance of it not landing due to the accuracy resistance part of it. Unless you're six level star, and then it's, it's all the same. It's just the... It's the hypocrisy of saying that there's something wrong with this part of the game, so we have to fix it. But it's only wrong at the low levels, not at the high levels. That's, that's bull. Clearly, there's nothing wrong at the high levels, nothing wrong at the low levels. You guys just wanted to make it harder for us. I don't know how else to explain it. Don't know how else to explain it. You're like, well, everybody's getting these one star blessings and getting way too much out of it. We need to give them more incentives to get more blessings. Let's nerf this thing in the ground. I'm upset by this. I'm upset by this. I think it's bad for the game. I think it's bad all the way around. I don't really like the Phantom Touch changes. I'm not happy with it, but I would have been down to live with it. I would have been okay to live with the reduction here for the Brimstone blessing as well, but they took away the guaranteed. Come on, man. It's not even protected anymore. Like, what, what is the point of it? it? Only works on activated. Like, I'm, I'm upset. I'm upset. Uh, I don't know what else to say about it. I'm just upset by it. I think it's trash. Be way less avail way less effective in Sand Devil too, right? Anyway, that's all I got, guys. That's all I got. You know, they talk about saving us time with all these awakenings and these blessings. Oh, your champions are gonna be stronger. Ah, they're getting too strong. Let's let's take that away. Cannot believe how upset I am by this. And I'm ranting a little bit. So I'm gonna I'm gonna stop ranting about this a little bit. I'm gonna stop ranting a little bit and just be like, an unfortunate thing that's happened. Not happy with it. We will deal with it, we will live with it. But it's a little bit offensive. I don't take kindly to that. Let me know what you guys think. I mean, I can't believe it needs accuracy now. That is something. That is something. It needs accuracy. I mean, big middle finger, the player base. Big middle finger. All right, guys. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you sticking by. Uh, if you enjoyed this little uh, diatribe of mine, Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss the next one. It does a lot for my channel. It really does. Really appreciate it. But yeah, that's all we got. Until next we meet, I'm the Deadwood Jedi.